Okay, now we're going to use partial fraction decomposition uh, to do integrals like this one. Okay, so we've got to understand what separating up fractions into partial fractions is all about. So let me just do a quick, really simple example. Now, when I'm teaching Year 7 kids to add fractions together, so one third plus one fourth, one technique they like to use is to cross multiply the the 4 and the 3, okay, so our common denominator will be 12, and 4 times 1 is 4, 3 times 1 is 3, add those two up, and you get 7 on 12. So partial fractions decomposition is when we do this process in reverse. So let's say we had a fraction 1 on 12. Is there a number that a and B, such that A on 3 plus B on 4 is going to give me 1 on 12. So is there a number A and a number B, so I can split this up into the factors of 12 here. Um, well, I could do a few things. So I could continue this process on and go, well, 4A on 12, I'm multiplying this one by 4, this one by 3, 3B on 12. Okay, so that has to equal 1 on 12. So now I can just look at the numerators and go 1 on 4a plus 3b has to equal 1. Okay, so if I let, so solutions for this could be, well, a could equal 1 and b could equal negative 1, because then I'd have 4 minus 3 equals 1. I could have a equals 4 and b equals negative 5. So then I'd have 16 minus 15 also equals 1. So that means I could have 4 thirds minus 5 fourths, that would equal 1 twelfth. Same with 1 third minus 1 fourth. I could have, just as an example of one more, I could have 10 and b equal negative 13, and that would equal f. So, all these cases are, are true, but the reason I show you this is because this is how, this is basically exactly how we do uh, that. So it's, it's actually quite easy to do. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a hard process. So we're trying to, before we do the integral, let's just consider 1 on x squared minus 4. Now we want to separate it up into two factors. So we know a on x plus 2 plus b on x plus 2. Now x minus 2, x plus 2, multiply them together, they give x squared minus 4. So what if we cross multiply these? Right, so 1 on x squared minus 4, we want to equal a x plus 2 on x minus 2, x plus 2 plus b x minus 2, so this one multiplied up here, x minus 2, x plus 2. Now the denominators on both sides are equal, so we can just consider the numerator. So let's go with 1 equals a x plus 2, and b of x minus 2. Okay. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can solve for A and B here. Uh, the first way, or the, the more sound way to do it, is to expand these out, okay, and then compare the coefficients on each side of the equal sign. Okay, so let's have a go at that. It's a little bit longer. So I've got AX plus 2A plus BX minus 2B. Expand it out. So my x coefficients here are a and b, a and b are the things with x in them, so a, ax plus bx, and then my things without x, 2a minus 2b, so 2a minus 2b, okay, and what do they have to equal? That has to equal 1, okay, this is still equal to 1, okay, so what does that mean? That means there are no there are no x's on this side. So this is 0x. 
plus 1. Okay, so that means my a plus b has to equal 0. And this bit, whatever's left over, has to equal 1. So I could write two equations. 0 has to equal a plus b. And 1 has to equal 2a minus 2b. Okay. Now we've got to solve for a and b. So I can say a from this equation, equation 1, I can say a is equal to negative b. Okay, so I could substitute that into equation 2. I'll do it over here. So I could say 1 has to equal 2 negative b's. Because negative b is equal to a minus 2b. So I get 1 is equal to negative 4b, therefore b is equal to negative 1 4. Okay, and a plus b has to equal 0, so if b is negative 1 4, then a has to be 1 4. a equal 1 4. Okay, once I've got these values, it's very easy for me to do the integration now because I can substitute them back into a and b in here and I can do my integration. But before I do that, there is a, a simple little cheat to find a and b. I could get let, let x equal a number where this bracket is equal to zero and that this bracket will disappear and I can find b. So if I let x equal negative two, let x equal negative two, then I could have gone, well that's just zero. There's no x's over here. So this is just negative four b equals one. So negative four b is equal to 1, which is just, I jump straight to that step there. Therefore, b is negative, b equals negative 1 fourth. That's an equal sign. Okay, and then let x equal positive 2. Now, if I let x equals positive 2, this bracket becomes 0. 2 minus 2 is 0, that goes to 0. That becomes 1 fourth, really easy. Therefore, a equals 1 fourth. So I can just, I can, from this step, skip all this solving simultaneous and just go straight here it's a little cheap okay let's actually now that i know my a and b let's get rid of all that and actually do the integral okay so the integral i want to do one over x squared minus four dx has to equal this integral the integral of one fourth B is 1 fourth. Now I'm going to bring the 1 fourth out the front. 1 fourth of 1 on x minus 2 dx plus, or minus in this case, because it's minus 1 fourth, because b is negative 1 fourth, the integral of 1 over x plus 2 dx. Now these are very easy to solve. This is just 1 fourth of log to the base e of x minus 2 minus. 1 fourth of the natural log of, get rid of the line, x plus 2 plus c. You can put these together. Okay, 1 fourth the natural log of x minus 2 over x plus 2 plus c. Remember, got to have those absolute value signs unless we know we can get rid of them. Uh, count. Okay, that's it for question one. <laughs> okay, there's still a lot of questions for this because this is there's quite a lot of detail you need to know about partial fractions and what to do when. So that was the easy scenario. Let's just do one more, another easy scenario. Let's do this integral. But now we know how to do it. We can race through it a bit. Well, the back pen. The back pen's gone missing. Oh, here it is. Okay, back pen. x minus 5 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. Yep. Just checking if we're still recording. We are. That's good. Don't want to do all this for nothing. Here we go. So this is, oh, dx. Forget your dx. So this is x minus 5. If I factor this. What do I get? I get x plus 4, x minus, oh, plus 3, sorry, x plus 3, x 
dx. Now I want to separate this up into a over x plus 4 dx plus b over x plus 3 dx. Okay, separate it up into two easier uh, partial fractions. Okay, so let's, let's work that out. So we've got x minus 5 over x plus 4 x plus 3 and we want that to equal a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 3. Now, okay, so I'm going to cross multiply these, have them equal to the numerator. So let's just go straight to that step. x minus 5 equals a x minus 3's plus b of x plus 4's. Now, let's do the cheeky little step here to make our lives easier. Let x equal, what do we want x equal? We want this bracket to equal 0. So let x equal positive 3. So if x equals positive 3, I get negative 2 on this side. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Equals uh, 3 plus 4, that's 7. 7b. Therefore, b is negative 2 sevenths. Just open this for last time. No, I didn't. Oh, I did a minus 3. Ah, rats. It's supposed to be positive 3, positive 3. That should be positive 3, that positive 3. Oh, so now I want to let x equal negative 3 on this side. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. That would have been frustrating all of you watching me do that. Uh, negative 3 here is just b. So I get b equals negative 8. There we go. Okay, so now we're back on track. B equals negative 8. What else can I let x equal? I could let x equal negative 4. I'm going to make this bracket equal 0. Negative 4, I get negative 1. Yeah, negative 1a. So negative a has to equal negative 4 minus 5. That's negative 9. Therefore, a equals 9. Okay, 9 and negative 8. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of all this because we've got our values. Okay, so now we want this integral. We know this is 9, this is 8. dx there, and dx there, and now we're keeping goals. So now we've just got 9 log to the base e of x plus 4 minus 8 of natural log of x plus 3 absolute value plus c and we'd have to put them together can we put them together uh we could if we took the nine and the eight up let's not okay that's it beautiful okay that's another easy one i almost made a mistake but that's okay You'll forgive me for that okay now let's get into a couple of the trickier ones now we want to know what happens in this case? Okay, we're going to do this one. We'll just do it through an example. So x minus 5 over x squared plus 4x plus 4 dx. Okay, you might be thinking, all right, same as, same as before. Okay, so let's, let's factor this. x minus 5, we get x plus 2 all squared dx. Here we go, the factors are the same. Okay, so that changes things. I'll show you why. So when we do our partial fraction decomposition, we need x, oh, sorry, x plus 2 all squared. Now we want to find an a and a b. a and a b, and you might be tempted just to write x plus 2 and x plus 2 here. And 
you should try that. See what happens when you try and do your partial fraction with x plus 2 and x plus 2. What happens is it doesn't work, but you should try it and see what happens. You have to make one of these factors squared in order for this to work. You might be thinking, well, what's the point of that? We've got this, but let's, let's show you what happens when we do that. Okay, so we're going to have x minus 5 equals 2. Uh, we have to multiply this one by 1x plus 2. So we've got ax plus 2. Plus this one is already, it's already got that denominator. So this one's just a plus b. Yeah, You don't have to multiply this b by anything to get the same denominator. We just multiply this one by x plus 2 when we've got it. Okay, so now x minus 5 equals, let's expand it out, plus 2a plus b. Okay, now a, let's equate our coefficients. Our number in front of the x here is 1. The number in front of the, our only x here is a, so therefore a has to be 1. Okay, the negative 5 is made up of 2a plus b. Negative 5 is equal to 2a plus b. Okay, negative 5 equals the rest of this. We already know a is 1, so this is 2, so now I'm at negative 7 is equal to b. Alright, so what I got last time? Yes, that's great. Okay, so 1 and negative 7. So let's put 1 for A and we'll put minus 7 for B. Okay, so let's write this out. And we want to do the integral dx integral, separate it up into two different ones. There we go. Well, this one's very easy, it's just the natural log of x plus 2. And this one, well, we're going to have to do a little u substitution here. This is a very easy u substitution, but let's do it anyway. Okay, so let's go minus 7 of 1 on u squared du. Okay, I'm just doing that straight away. Let, let u equal x plus, x plus 2 do what? Uh, du dx is 1, so I can make that substitution, no problems. u negative 2. So now I'm going to get log x plus 2. I haven't put my plus c on the end here. Let's put plus c. Minus. Um, I'll just do this one as well. Uh, it's going to be plus. Because this is going to be u to the negative 1. Plus 7 on u, plus d, just in case we get another different thing there, yep. And that's it, let's just substitute back in, x plus 2, oops, plus 7 on x plus 2, plus d. Wonderful. Okay, that was a bit different. When you've got a double factor here, or a repeated factor, we need to make sure that uh, we've got a repeated factor on one of our partial fractions. So that's a, a bit of a trick you've got to be aware of. And there's one more. One more trick you've got to be aware of. Okay, let's do this one. x minus 5 over x minus 1 x squared plus 4. Okay, so this one we've got this factor cannot be factored into linear factors. So we've got a quadratic factor down the bottom here that can't be simplified any further. So what we do with that one, a on x minus 1 with the linear factor, this one that can't be simplified, we need to have a linear factor on top. So bx plus c over x squared plus 4. Okay. So now we need three equations to solve for b and c. Okay, so that is typically that. There we go. Okay, so how are we going to do that? All right, we're going to go x minus 5. I'm going to skip a few steps here. We'll just go a of x squared plus 4 plus bx plus c 
times x minus 1. Okay, expand it out. We get ax squared plus 4x plus bx squared uh, minus bx plus cx minus c. Expanding that all out. So minus 5. Now, equate our coefficients. ax squared plus bx squared has to equal 0x squared. We need to do this. 0x squared plus x. So therefore, 0 has to equal a plus b. Yeah, ax squared plus bx squared has to equal that. Okay, well, we've got here 4x. Well, we've got 4x minus bx. Oh, well, we have 4x here. I can move this onto the other side. I could make it negative 3x has to equal c minus b. So I could go negative 3 has to equal c minus b. So there we go. Oh, hang on. This shouldn't be 4x, should it? It should be 4a. Whoops. I can expand brackets. That's why I didn't get that answer. Well, the last time I did it. Okay, so 1 has to equal just these bits with the x in it. Here we go. Cx minus b, so c minus b. And negative 5, what's that equal? That has to equal 4a minus c. So 4a minus c. All right, we could solve these ones. So I've got from here, this leads to negative b is equal to a. This is my equation 2. I can put negative b, well, it's the same as positive a. So I've got 1 equals c plus a. And then I could put that in here. Right? So I can go c equals 1 minus a, put that in the last one, equation 3, negative 5 equals 4a minus c, which is 1 minus a, and then negative 5 equals 4a minus 1 plus a, that's 5a minus 1, so it's minus 4 equals 5a, which is, therefore, a equals negative 4 fifths. Good. So we've got an a equals negative 4 fifths, and a is the same as negative b, therefore b is 4 fifths, positive. And c is 1 minus a, so c has to be 1 plus 4 fifths, which is 9 fifths. Okay. We've got negative 4 fifths, 4 fifths, and 9 fifths. I've got them in there somewhere, so I won't forget them. Okay, let's get rid of all of that. Go back to the integral. Here we go. All right. A, lucky I wrote it down because I will forget, is negative 4 fifths. So let's put it out front. Negative 4 fifths. Equal sign here. Negative 4 fifths of 1 over x minus 1 dx. Okay. For bx plus c. Okay. Let's go with, we'll take 1 fifth out front. So plus 1 fifth of, well, we could separate these up into two different ones as well. So we could go uh, b, which was 4 fifths. So we'll go 4 fifths bracket of x over x squared plus 4 dx and c was 9 fifths so I can go plus 9 fifths of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx okay then I can take each of these individually so this one negative 4 fifths of the natural log of x minus 1. It's an easy one. This one, it's almost a log. I just need this to be a, a 2 here. 
So to make this one a 2, I have to divide it by 2 here. So I'm going to go plus 4 tenths of log of x squared plus 4. Now I don't need the absolute value sign because x squared plus 4 is always greater than 0. Okay, for all real values of x. And then plus, now this one is almost an inverse tan. So to make this an inverse tan, I have to make this a 2. So I can make that, that a 2, then make that 9 tenths. 9 tenths of inverse tan x on 2 plus c. Did I get that right? I only had two fifths for this one. Oh, yes. Okay. So instead of four, of course, four tenths, get to left down, make it two fifths. I should have done that initially. That was silly. Oh, that's all right. That's it. Oh, that was a long video.